Now let's look at this thing called impulse. The definition for impulse is average force times time. When we multiply like this, it means height times the base. So it is the area of a graph. Impulse must be the area of a force versus time graph. Since the height is the F and the, the base is the delta T. During an event like a collision, the force involved is usually a variable force kind of like this. For example, if we hit the ball with a bat, the force between the ball and the bat is a contact force. Therefore, the force only acts on the ball when it is in contact with the bat. And if you remember, force causes deformation. So during the contact time, the ball first gets deformed more and more and then less and less as they separate. Kind of like a spring. The more the deformation, the stronger the force. So the force as a function of time looks like this, with the force increasing and then decreasing, with the force increasing and then decreasing. The average force would be the equivalent force for this variable force. So if the force is a constant, the average force, the entire time delta t, the area of the two graphs would be exactly the same, which means uh, exactly the same amount of impulse. And if we go back and look at the momentum equation again, the momentum is uh, mv. And then if we look at the changes, that means we get that the change in momentum is uh, m times delta v, because uh, if the mass doesn't change, we can take it out of the delta. And the delta V is the average acceleration times time. This is MA, which is uh, the net force. But because this is the average acceleration, this gives us the average net force. So average net force times time, average for net force times time. Which means uh, if this force is a net force, if we're talking about the net force, then this average net force times time equals to the change in momentum. So the impulse of the net force equals the change in momentum. And what is the unit for impulse? Let's see, since it is force times time, that means it is newtons times seconds. But it is also the change in momentum and the momentum is mass times velocity, so this is also kilograms times meters per second. They're the same. We can use either one of those. But often people would use Newton times second for impulse because it's force times time. And we would use kilograms meters per second for the momentum. But they're the same anyway. Now let's look at an example. A 0.145 kilogram baseball pitched at 30 meters per second gets hit straight back at 40 meters per second. Find the impulse on the ball by the bat, and the impulse on the bat by the ball. And if the contact time between the bat and the ball is 2 times 10 to the negative third seconds, find the average contact force on the ball by the bat. The impulse on the ball by the bat is the average force on the ball by the bat times the time. And since this force is the net force on the ball, it is also the changing momentum of the ball. We have the time, but we don't have the force. That means we need to use the changing momentum to find the impulse. We have all the information for that. So delta P equals to M times delta V. The mass of the ball is 0.145. The delta V would be the final velocity minus the initial velocity, which would be 40 minus 30. There's something wrong with my work over here. Can you tell me what is wrong?
we're dealing with vectors. Velocity, momentum, force, impulse, they are all vectors. That means we need to pay attention to the direction. If we say this uh, 40 is positive, then we have to say the 30 is negative because they are in opposite directions. Or if you like to, you can say the 30 is positive, 40 will be negative. You can choose to the left as positive or you can choose to the right as positive. It does not matter which one you choose because the coordinate system is something we can choose. But whichever coordinate system you choose, you just have to be consistent with it. Okay, in this case, I'm just going to use to the right as positive. That means uh, to the left, this 40 meters per second is negative. So this is uh, negative 10.15. And the unit can be Newton second or we can use uh, kilograms meters per second. And this negative means uh, it's going to the left. So this is the answer for part A. Now, of course, if you had chosen to the left as positive, then your delta P would be 0.145 the mass times the delta V, which would be positive 40 final velocity minus the negative 30, the initial velocity. And this would have given us a positive 10.15 Newton second. Now this positive would mean to the left, which means uh, if we choose a different coordinate system, our result will be the same, 10.15 Newton second to the left. For part B, we want to find the impulse on the bat by the ball. It's the same equation. We know the time, but not the force. In this case though, we do not have information about the changing momentum of the bat. And the force on the bat by the ball is not the net force on the bat either because there is someone holding onto the bat, swinging the bat. So we cannot use the bat to find the impulse on the bat. However, we do know that during contact, the force on the ball by the bat and the force on the bat by the ball are a pair of equal and opposite action force and reaction force. This means that the impulse on the bat by the ball is the same amount, 10.15 newton second, but in opposite direction. So it is positive and to the right. For part C, we're given the contact time and we have to find the average force. So we'll need this part of the equation. Because we want the average force on the ball by the bat, we'll need to use the impulse on the ball. So the average force on the ball times time will equal to the impulse on the ball, which is negative 10.15. So this is the average force times the time, 2 times 10 to the negative third. And this will give us an average force that is negative 50, 75 newtons. This negative means uh, it's uh, to the left. It makes sense for the impulse on the ball and the average force on the ball to go to the left because uh, in order to hit the ball back that way, the bat and ball will look like this. The contact force between the two is uh, from a contact surface, so it's normal force. The normal force on the ball goes to the left. The normal force on the bat goes to the right. So the impulse on the bat goes to the right. Another thing is that in this case, the forces acting on the ball actually includes the force from the bat and the gravitational force on the ball. For this 0.145 kilogram ball, mg is only 1.45 newtons. If we compare the 1.45 Newton mg to this 5,075 Newtons, we can see that it is reasonable for us to ignore the mg of the ball. The impulse equation can also be used to explain why, if we jump off the table, we would bend our knees to land safely. When we land, 
there is a certain amount of downward momentum we have to remove in order to come to rest on the ground. So while the delta P is the same, bending our knees allows uh, more time to come to a stop. Therefore, less force on our knees. An abrupt landing on straight knees involves a lot less time and a lot stronger force, which can damage our joints. Same goes for how airbags soften the blow in an automobile collision. An inflated airbag provides a longer time for a person to come to a complete stop in an accident. Therefore, the force on the person is lessened.